Good evening. This is the retrospective of Borderlands 2. Is that what I'm calling it? I don't even know what I'm going to title this. I had like a couple titles in the works. This is this has been a video that I've been wanting to make for a really long time. This initially started with me deciding that I was going to uh, I started playing through Borderlands 3 with a friend a while like a long uh, man it, it was a while ago now, quite a few months ago, you know, almost half a year ago now. And maybe not a full half a year. Actually Oh, it might have been a full half a year ago, to be honest. But uh, so I've had I've had these recordings for a minute now, and I've uh, I originally was gonna make a Borderlands three and two retrospective all in like the same video, and I didn't really know how I was gonna go about it. And here we are. This is how we're gonna go about it. I'm gonna split it up. So this is gonna be a Borderlands two video. I'm gonna make it one full video. So if this is, I hope this isn't two hours long. Because it's not that I don't want to make it to our video, it's that Adobe Premiere suffers if I try to edit anything longer than 30 minutes. That's why most videos on my channel aren't longer than 30 minutes, because Adobe Premiere dies <laughs> after the 10 minute mark of editing. We're going to talk about Borderlands 2 in this video. And man, Borderlands 2 is fun. I, I was playing it again recently. That's why I kind of wanted to, I came back to this idea because I've had these recordings for a while. I mean, I, I've, I always play through Borderlands. I always play Borderlands. But this was uh, the recording that you're, the, at least footage you're going to see in the background. It's really the first time that I sat down and recorded a full playthrough of Borderlands 2. And it's weird because I, Borderlands 2, I was not my first Borderlands game. I mean, for most people probably played Borderlands the first game. Uh, but I, I want to bring up the story because this is a great this is a great memory of mine I think and I'm I'm glad it went this way. So the first Borderlands game I ever played was the first Borderlands you know the, just Borderlands one I guess we could call it. And what had happened was Borderlands two had just released at the time, and uh, uh, like a bunch of my friends were playing it. Like uh, uh, some friends from school were playing it. And I think Borderlands 2 had released in 2012. I think I was either 11 or 12 at this time. So, you know, I was still pretty young, but uh, I didn't obviously at the time I was really young, so I didn't have money for myself or anything. It was more or less just like, you know, beg the parents for money. So I, I remember a bunch of people were playing Borderlands 2 and I saw a friend from school was talking about it and playing it. And then a couple of people that I had met online uh, that were around my age, like were talking about Borderlands 2 and playing it. And now that I think back to this, I'm surprised that they were willing to play with me just for this specific reason. I basically called up my dad because my friends were like, oh, Borderlands 2 is out. We want to play Borderlands 2. So I called up my dad and I was like, because uh, he had a, I had access to his PayPal account on my Xbox 360 back in the day. And because that's how I bought games. And I was like, oh, can I like, can I buy this game? And I'm like, it's $60. And he's like, okay, you can't spend that much. And I was like, crap. And then I saw the first Borderlands game was only 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay, well, can I spend $20? And he said, yeah, sure. He didn't really care. And I was very thankful for that. And I'm glad he said no to the $60. I mean, granted, I didn't really expect him to say yes to it i to be honest that's why i immediately because it wasn't like a please 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 it was more of like a i understand you know like i don't have the money it's the middle of the summer it wasn't even like i think it was it wasn't even the middle of the summer i think it was the end of the summer it wasn't like any any near any holidays like nothing special was going on there's no reason so uh i'm glad he let me spend the 20 and i'm glad i got the first borderlands game because i got to experience that uh I want to say I'm surprised my friends played with me because I think they ended up having the second Borderlands game, yet I got the first Borderlands game and they were all willing to play Borderlands 1 with me, which, uh, I, I mean, thinking back to that now, uh, you know, it makes sense that you would do that with your friend. You're going to play the game that everybody has, but like nowadays... Dude, people, pe my, my friends from high school and shit, you know, fucking, they would never do that. I've had so many times where people are like, dude, go fuck yourself. We all want to play this singular game for 300 hours straight. And it's like, can't we do something else? I don't have that game or I don't, I don't want to do this. Or can we do something else? No, we all want to do this. You know, I guess it was friends like uh, that in the past. You know, I grew up with people that it's like oh let's all i mean i was always the type to be like let's all do something together like if we're if you we have a bunch of friends on on discord or out somewhere let's all do something together i hate you know you know leaving somebody out even if it's one person you know like if you have a game where it's a four person game and a fifth wants to join let's all play a different game maybe that's just me you know and obviously sometimes everybody just wants to play that one game and that's understandable but uh anyway that's a little background for uh the first borderlands game i never actually beat the first borderlands game either i know how it the story goes to an extent obviously it's 
such an old game at this point. And a little while after playing the first Borderlands game, I ended up getting the Cromorax DLC, which is the uh, General Knox DLC, it's called, but Cromorax is in it. He's like the big, the big thing about it, because I remember my friends, there was four DLC, and I didn't know what any of them, if any of them were good or anything. And my friend was like, I think a couple of my friends were like, get this one, this is the best one. And it was because of the loot room, you know, the loot room at the end. And then he had Cromorax, who was like, boss that everybody talked about was like, oh, the Cromorax boss, you gotta farm this. So something that I want to get into with Borderlands 1, and we're going to talk about Borderlands 2 here. But Borderlands 1, because this is this is a precursor to how we got into Borderlands 2, and I, I have to explain my style of play to an extent, because I feel like a lot of people are going to hate me for it, and it's just the way I play games. But uh, Borderlands 1, I was I was one of those people you know, kids at the time where it's like, oh, I really loved glitches and modding and cheating games to an extent, you know? I mean, I was on an Xbox 3, originally I'd played on a PlayStation 2 and whatnot, so I didn't really have access to any of that, but right when I was playing on the Xbox 360 and stuff, I always had friends that were like, oh, look at this, like, duplication glitch, unlimited ammo glitch, you know, it was always the duplication glitches, unlimited money glitch, GTA 5, you know what I'm saying? I was just always fascinated with, like, breaking the game to an extent, you know, like, just making it easier, making myself feel more, more overpowered. There wasn't really any specific reason. It was always just fun as like a kid to be like, oh, let's do like a duplication glitch and then get a bunch of money. And then we could just buy all of the weapons and stuff. That was always a lot of fun to me. And I remember my friends knew somebody who I guess back in Borderlands 1 and 2, you could mod, uh, you could mod in weapons. You could go on a save editor, give yourself like a broken gun that does like a billion damage save it to your character it's very simple nowadays like i understand how all of that works especially being on pc i feel like most people understand how that works but back back then on xbox 360 as a kid who didn't even like you know barely even used a computer you know i knew what a computer was but i didn't even know i could like really play games on a computer i didn't know there was a whole world of games on pc but uh yeah and i remember just like i didn't know how that stuff worked i thought you needed like a some kind of mod menu with a jtag xbox to get that shit and uh my friend was like, oh yeah, I got a, I got a modded weapon that my friend gave me, and we all duplicated that weapon because, you know, it was very, it's very easy to duplicate weapons, uh, you know, Borderlands, you know, minus, you know, actually using cheats, like just glitching wise, where, uh, take the unlimited magazine glitch from Borderlands 2, where it's like, you pull off a Vladoff launcher because the Vladoff launchers, I, or was it the Vladoff? I think it's the Vladoff ones. One of the rocket launchers in the game has the ability to, uh, ease every other shot doesn't consume ammo and what would happen is if you shot and then switched weapons uh due to borderlands 2 being extremely buggy with how the weapons worked this is basically weapon merging 101 is that you it would make your other weapon have infinite ammo because it would transfer over so the game would think that you have that you know infinite shot that's supposed to not consume ammo but since you switched weapons you're now using a different weapon and it would break the game and then you would never have to reload and it was fun i used to use that glitch all of the time on console all of the time anyway my friends had a modded weapon that did like a billion damage and i was like let's duplicate it we duplicated it and i just loved cheating so you probably know what that's going to get into i uh when i played borderlands 2 I had always, uh, I started the game off by, like, cheating. I was just looking up, like, I think I played it normally for a little bit, but then, like, after a while, I was like, oh, there's, like, an infinite ammo cheat that you can do, and all of that. So I, like, exclusively played Borderlands 2 with some kind of mod or cheat, even on Xbox 360. Something that I realized you could do with Borderlands 2 360, which, you know, you can do now, obviously, is you would open up a save your save file in gib uh, gib save editor for borderlands 2 and you can give your you can change your ammo type so what you can do is you can change how much uh, spare ammo your weapon held and you can make it so it was infinite and every time you shot it like it regenerated ammo or whatever it was and i have a couple of saves like that now still but yeah so i would just do that for all my characters on the xbox 360 so i had never played borderlands 2 without cheating that sounds messed up well, like, I wouldn't go over the top. Like, you know, I would, I, I, most of the time, it would just be, like, infinite ammo to an extent because, I don't know, I just, I just liked having infinite ammo. That's just me. Is it broken? Of course, because you could just spam rocket launchers the whole time. Did I care? Not at all. Wouldn't do god mode or anything like that. I always thought that was just too broken. Like, I still want to have some kind of vulnerability, you know, just not being able to die is just stupid. Uh, at least for me, it says the person that, you know, uses infinite ammo. But, uh, other than Gage's glitch, where she can, uh, pull out clap or I was about to say clap trap, death trap, and she can heal herself, you know, where she's, like, 
yeah, yeah, it's the shield gl man. I'm just I'm just bringing up all these glitches, man. Uh, you would go to fast travel. What you would do is you would take off your shield, and you would put it on. And then the moment you put it on, you call you would call out death trap. You take off your shield, and then you put it on. And because your shield would be at zero, he would go to regenerate your shield. He uh, the clap trap, clap trap, death trap had a perk, or you could get a. Uh, it wasn't a perk, but he had like a, an ability, like a skill point thing, where you can make it would regenerate your shield if it hit zero. If you fast traveled in the middle of him regenerating your shield you would keep that regeneration. So every time you would take damage, it would like instantly regen your shield. Uh, I think it was still possible to die. Like you can still, like your shield would still take damage, but it would reg like the regen speed would be like instant and it would be like super fast regen. So it, it, it would be like, you know, you would be regening 500 shield a second. So every time you took, you know, if you took 500 damage, it would immediately regen. But uh, yeah, I've always played Borderlands 2 with cheats. And I just never play it without them, especially at least for uh, the only cheat that I really did use, like that I only use nowadays is infinite. Oh, and then the other one that I used, I would always give myself the max amount of skill points. This is this is kind of broken. I know a lot of people are probably gonna be like, that is crazy broken. And like to an extent, giving yourself every single skill point in the game is broken. Yeah, I always just thought it was fun. I always just hated not having skills. I don't know. It's just very weird. It's just even nowadays, I, I still play the game with infinite, not infinite clip, infinite clips broken because one infinite clips a little bit broken because you could just never stop shooting. And two, I really like reload animations. Uh, it's yeah, that's that's weird. But I'm one of those people that really likes, you know, the animations of games and stuff. And I think reload animations are like something extremely like you can always make reload animations unique in games and whatnot so i just i just like the ability to reload plus it's slightly it's a little bit too broken for me to just constantly shoot a single weapon and never stop i don't know i like having that reload like having to reload the weapon so yeah i still use infinite ammo not infinite clip there's a difference infinite ammo you have to reload infinite clip is infinite yeah and then i still i still always max out my skill points i just can't now this gameplay you're seeing I do play it legitimately up until a certain point where I just get really bored and I I just give like my plan for this Borderlands 2 video was to play it as legitimately as possible and I got half I don't even know if I made it halfway through the game and I was just like I don't give a shit I don't care uh <laughs> I genuinely don't care. Whatever, dude. Like, who cares? It's my video. It's a single player game. I'm not harming anybody. If you're mad, add whatever. Like, I don't know. That's that's how I always played the game. Obviously, you know, that's just me. You know, you don't have to play it the same. I play it differently. You know, Borderlands 2, it's, I don't know. You can't really say anything about cheating considering the entire game itself is like a big cheat. Like, I don't know. Like, it would be hypocritical for you to be like, a gun zerker main and then to be like oh you're using infinite ammo or you're doing this or that or you're giving yourself unlimited skill points that's stupid and it's like yeah but like the entire character itself is broken gun zerker so like the entire like most of borderlands 2 is literally just a walking glitch like you switch weapons and you just accidentally did a weapon merge accidentally glitching your weapon without even knowing it i mean i have bar on too i think in this playthrough i never turn off badass rank i know a lot of youtubers do for their stuff but uh this is just was meant to be background footage for a casual playthrough of mine, so like it's nothing special. I always use bar because you know if I'm gonna get the badass points, might as well use them. My bar isn't broken or anything. Uh, I it is like a legitimate bar. It's like badass rank thirty thousand or something like that. I think in this video it's twenty nine k. It might be higher now, but uh, so my stats aren't incredibly broken. Now I know I spent a lot of time talking about the intro, and I'll probably you know put a skip. So if you're here, it's probably because I was nice enough to say S skip to here so you don't have to hear my entire uh background on the game and stuff you know just my like how i got into borderlands and uh and now we can talk about borderlands 2 itself borderlands 2 man uh looking back on this game i mean i mean i can't really say looking back on it as i literally played it yesterday <laughs> so it's not really you know it's not really like you have to look back that far uh this playthrough we're playing salvador or gunzerker uh he has the ability to dual wield weapons, and I thought that was cool. Uh, I mean, something that I really hate that Borderlands 3 didn't have is if you look at Borderlands the pre-sequel, Nisha in the pre-sequel, she was able to dual wield pistols. 
uh, normally without like that wasn't even her uh, ability or anything like it wasn't her ultimate or whatever you would call it special ability I, I guess I would call I'm gonna call it an ultimate for now on uh, it wasn't really her ultimate or anything it was literally just she was able to dual wield only pistols and I thought that was sick you know so like if you had a revolver in your first hand that same exact revolver would duplicate to the other hand and she would just dual wield it I thought that was cool and I was really wishing that uh Borderlands 3 was going to have some kind of character that would dual wield weapons, but none of the characters dual wield weapons in Borderlands 3. And then the worst part about Borderlands 3, I, I, I'm, I'm not even talking about 2 right now, but I just want to talk about this that I don't like about Borderlands 3, is they added a new skill tree to every character instead of adding a new character, and I kind of hate that. Don't get me wrong, the new skill trees are cool and stuff, but like point that keeps me playing Borderlands 2, not the entire point, but one of the big things in Borderlands 2 that keeps me coming back is how many characters there are to play. Like, you have Salvador, you have Maya, you have Lilith, you have, uh, Lilith, what the hell am I talking about? You have Salvador, Maya, uh, Zero, and Axton. And then you have two extra, full-on extra characters with, like, three skill trees, which would be uh, Gage, and then you have Krieg, and, like, Krieg and Gage are super, super cool characters, like, and they, everybody plays completely different, like, Krieg plays, is a completely different character, and then Zero, Zero is completely different than this character, like, everybody is completely different and has a unique ability, and it's just so much fun, it gives you so much more to do, to be honest, I think that's one of the things that makes Borderlands 2 such a praised and, you know, replayable game even to today's standards there are plenty of content creators that still even non-content creators just people in general that still play borderlands 2 because it's a lot of fun i mean com even compared to borderlands 3 like i love borderlands 3 and all but gameplay wise it just feels really different to an extent i don't really can't really put my finger on it maybe it's just some of the weapons kind of feel the same there's not as much uniqueness and i think there are some bad points to borderlands 2 which i do want to talk about uh and i feel like quite a few people have that same set sentiment of Borderlands 2 does have some problems. I think the OP levels are kind of rough to an extent. I like a lot of the time I don't usually make it into overpowered levels. Like I know a lot of people like some people will play a character and just max it out, get to the highest OP level, play through the entire game, do everything, spend like 100 hours on a character. And like I've spent a lot of time on certain characters but I've never really, like, played on the OP levels because it's just so min-maxy at that point. Like, I've, I don't, I've never made it to OP-10. I've had OP-8 characters that I've played on before, but I've never played OP-10 because they added two more OP levels, and it's just not worth it because you, it's so, like, again, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I think it could be fun for some people, but uh, I'm a casual gamer, especially for single-player games slash co-op games like Borderlands, like Borderlands 3, you know, Diablo-type games. I want to just get into the game and feel powerful. You know, I don't want to feel like broken. I don't want to feel like a, like I have infinite health and I'm, I'm just like, got, got, have God mode on, you know, that's too broken. But like, I just want to be able to walk in there and be able to use any weapon I want to an extent, you know, like uh, a problem for me with Borderlands 2 and even 3 to an extent uh, with the mayhem levels is like Borderlands 2, you can't use every legendary. There's like some of them are just shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like, maybe in normal mode you can, but once you get to, like, true Volt Hunter and ultimate Volt Hunter, like, some weapons just become kind of useless, you know, unless you maybe build around them, but, like, there's a lot of weapons, you know, that are just straight up doo-doo that aren't really meta to an extent, and that's something that I really, really dislike, kind of Borderlands in general, like, obviously weapons are going to become worse over time with level caps and stuff, but, like, I don't know, I think the overpowered levels even make that more intense to an extent, and I don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with having overpowered levels. I think it's great that the game has overpowered levels because it allows for certain people who want to make the most broken, you know, very min-maxy build possible, because again, uh, Borderlands is, is an RPG, it's, you know, it's like Diablo, it's very min-maxy with how it works, you know, that's the way the game is meant to be played. You get specific skill trees and then switch out your class mods during certain fights and like change your shield for a specific fight or an area you're going to like that's perfectly fine that's the way the game is meant to be played to an extent and i don't think there's anything wrong with that with have like you know because you still feel powerful like it's not like there's anything wrong with that if you're playing on op10 and you have a specific build and it's like okay like in the middle of your boss fight you will switch out your shield to for this one because you get a bonus with this one and then you switch out your class mod because you use the bonuses for this and then you use this weapon with this class mod like i don't think there's anything wrong with that because then when you complete the fight you still feel 
you know, rewarded. You still feel like, you know, you're good at the game, you know, it's like, it's still worth it. I don't know, for me, I just don't really like that. It feels too, you know, broken. Like, you know, I don't want to say it's like Dark Souls difficulty. Obviously, this game isn't Dark Souls, but it's just, it's just too much, you know? Like, eh, I just want to have fun playing the game. I'm playing it solo, you know? I'm playing single player. Like, let me just, let me just have a bit of fun, you know? I'm going to just do what I want. I don't want to have to min-max. I want to be able to use a majority of the legendary weapons, um, you know, all of the mobs. Like, I just want to have fun with it. Uh, at least for me. And again, like, you can have fun with Borderlands too. You could just simply not play on overpowered levels. And for the most part, I tend to not do any overpowered levels. I do like Digistruct Peak. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think there are some weapons that are locked behind overpowered levels, which I, I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure there are to an extent. I know Borderlands... Uh, three has it so certain weapons are like certain legendaries are locked behind mayhem like you have to be on mayhem four or higher which i hate that i hate it so much that's something that uh pisses me off about borderlands three which you know even for borderlands two like i don't think there's anything wrong with locking specific legendaries behind ultimate volt hunter or true volt hunter mode but locking them behind something like the overpowered levels which is like supposed to be the extreme difficulty type deal i kind of hate it's not like you're locking it behind like something specific like ultimate volt hunter mode isn't that difficult like yeah it's harder than normal mode it's meant for your to for you to level up more when originally when borderlands 2 first released it only went up to like level 50 and you only had normal mode and then true volt hunter mode was as a dlc where you were able to add 10 more levels to the game so you went up to level i think 60 or 61 and that was what true Volt Hunter mode was meant for. It was meant to accommodate those extra levels. Same thing with Ultimate Volt Hunter. When Ultimate Volt Hunter dropped, they added, I think, a 10 or 11 more levels. And that's how we got the level 71 uh, or 70. I think that's how you got to level 71, I think it was, or 72. I think it was 71. And then the Lilith DLC added even more. I think you could hit level 80 in the game. I could be wrong, though. I could be completely wrong. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could hit, like, yeah, you could get higher than 70 now or 72 or whatever it was again like so the ultimate volt hunter was meant to accommodate the higher levels it wasn't meant to necessarily be like you know an overpowered mode like op is it was meant to uh just accommodate you know wanting to level up higher because if you were level 72 fighting against level 50 characters you're just gonna wipe the floor with them it's not really gonna be fun to an extent you know and plus with the weapons you just want the weapons to scale up and stuff again so like that's why i think like I don't know, Ultimate Volt Hunter mode. I always I always get to Ultimate Volt Hunter. I always will end up playing until Ultimate Volt Hunter mode, but I don't know. I don't like the OP levels. I feel like it's just a bit much. Like maybe OP level like up to five or something like that, but I don't know. It still feels like it's too much. Like I just not, I'm just not a fan of it. With that out of the way, I guess like we can actually talk about Borderlands 2. I mean, I was talking about Borderlands 2 there, but I do want to talk about the story and it's already been 25 minutes for me, but like, I want to get into the story of Borderlands 2, all right? You, you start off, Claptrap finds you dead on a, I was going to say a beach, but it's not really a beach. It's like a frozen beach in the Arctic on Pandora. The Southern Shelf, I think that's the name of this place. I, I'm going to remember a lot of these names. I'm going to try to. Some of the names of the maps I remember, some of them I don't. Uh... But yeah, so, you know, Claptrap finds you as per usual. I feel like everybody's played Borderlands 2 at this point, but I will I will try to explain stuff in a way where uh, even if you haven't played the game, you could kind of understand it. You know, obviously most people know Borderlands 2 and have played it, but uh, yeah, so you wait. Claptrap finds... So, I mean, I guess to start, the intro hat plays, you know, all that music. Your, your characters are on a train fighting, and then, you know... Uh, uh, handsome Jack has a dummy on the train with explosive tied to it, and he's like, you're not, you're not, you're not him, pal. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Okay. And then, uh, that blows up. The train blows up. Claptrap finds you, luckily alive, not dead. Angel is in your head again. She's, she, Angel, the person that talks on the screen, who's like, ah, oh, Vault Hunter, you need to go here. She is also in Borderlands 1. Uh, but in Borderlands 2, she's in the game again, and she tells your character, she's like, okay, you need to do, go follow this person, or do this, or you should do this, and I'm gonna help you, and make sure you survive, or whatever the hell. Uh, so you help Claptrap, he takes you to his home, uh, after he takes you to his home, you, he gets his eye stolen, he gets it ripped out by Knuckle Dragger. 
Joker, and that's, bas that's basically your tutorial boss. This is really the very much intro is a tutorial, and I, I really... If you're somebody like me who plays through Borderlands 2 constantly, like always replays the game on a new character, uh, it sucks. <laughs> the the intro, the beginning, the first kind of like 20% of the game is boring. I don't know if anybody else who plays the game, like replays it a lot, has this problem. I always create new characters to play on, and oh my god, I am so bored of the intro of the game. Like fighting Knuckle Dragger, that entire intro was such a slog. Like for me, the game isn't really good i don't want to say good but it, like the game stops being boring for me after sanctuary gets gets put into the air but uh we'll get into that uh so he knuckle dragger takes his eye he's the first boss you meet he's the tutorial boss he's a he's a boner fart uh so you go you fight knuckle dragger he has a chance to drop a legendary pistol i forget I forget what the pistol is. I, I know that is it's a decent legendary. The one that he drops is a actual decent weapon. I forget what it is. I'll have to put it on screen here, uh, his drop. But uh, yeah, he has a chance to drop a legendary. If you get it, it's pretty good. It's kind of worth farming him for at least the beginning of the game because it does last quite a while, uh, at least on normal mode. And so after you fight Knuckle Dragger, you go to Liarsburg. And that's the name of the place. Holy crap. Am I really remembering the name of that place? Uh... I hate Liarsburg. It is so boring. Like, if you're first, if it's your first time playing the game, it's obviously going to be enjoyable. You know, your second, third time, it's still not going to be that bad. But, like, after after that third time, you're going to get really bored. It's going to be like, okay, like, I've played through this intro a lot, you know? Uh, but you go to Liarsburg, and it's like, you have, to, you have to kill the people that are there, the bad guys, the bandits, and then, you know, uh, ha Sir Hammerlock is like, uh, give me Claptrap's eye. And then he repairs Claptrap, he puts his eye back in, Oh my god, that shit is so boring. Uh, so, you have to go kill Captain Flint, and what happens with Captain Flint is, uh... Oh my god, what, what happens? I don't know, like, like you blast... The, well, first you kill Boom Boom. They're like the second boss. Uh, boom Boom. Boom and Boom, I think their name is. Whatever the hell. And they, have, they, they also have a chance to drop a really good legendary, which is the, uh... The lobbed. Oh my god, it's a legendary grenade. It's the, uh, it's, I forget the name of it. It's on screen right here. Whatever. Editing me will have a great time having more work to do putting stuff on screen. But, uh, yeah, so that grenade's really good. It lasts, like, quite a long time. Like, it could almost last until, like, mid-game. Like, you know, it lasts quite a few levels. Uh, very good legendary grenade. And, uh, at least for, like, normal mode and whatnot. We're talking about specifically normal mode and whatnot here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so you have to go fight Captain Flint because he wants to, he wants to kill you because Captain, Captain Jack, wow, uh, eesh, Captain, F or not Captain Flint, Jack, Handsome Jack, dear god, we're talking about Borderlands here, not Pirates of the Caribbean, 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 whatever you want to pronounce it as, uh, so Handsome Jack, uh, comes and he's like, hey, there's a bounty on this guy, if you kill him, I'll give you a, 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 a million dollars. And then Captain Flint's like, a million dollars, we're gonna be rich. And then uh, he, he tells everybody to kill you as if they weren't gonna do that to begin with. And uh, you have to go kill Captain Flint. Then you go and you you kill Captain Flint. And uh, he drops a, I don't know if he has a, he can obviously all raid bosses or bosses in general can drop legendaries, but uh, he has a unique weapon that drops. And unique weapons are different than legendaries because they don't show up as legendary. They have, they are a rare rarity item or a blue rarity it would be a blue beam, uh, but they have red text. And certain uniques are really good for an extent. They're not like crazy broken, but uh, Captain Flint's unique is actually a really good weapon. And I think he has a 100% chance to drop it if I'm not mistaken. Like I don't know if he's... I'm pretty sure it is a 100% chance, percent, percent chance to drop it, uh, and it is, it is actually a decent item, uh, it does do flame or fire damage, and something that I want to talk about now that I bring that up that I really dislike about Borderlands 2 is fire damage. Not that fire damage is bad, it's bad for Borderlands 2 because a lot of the mobs you actually end up fighting, at least to me, are like robots or people who resist fire. Uh, so, like, obviously, fire damage doesn't really work too well on Captain Flint. Like, fire damage works great on normal bandits and stuff, but against robots and stuff, it 
isn't really that good. Uh, Borderlands 3 kind of fixed this to an extent with how their elements work, which I really like a lot about Borderlands 3, but Borderlands 2, fi anything that does fire damage feels so useless because any anything that isn't flesh uh, basically just takes no fire damage and the weapons are you no know, ass. Uh, and a lot of the mobs that you will be fighting against in Borderlands 2 I, maybe not a lot of them, but a decent amount of them, at least to me, when I play the game, I don't know if anybody else has this problem, are, are goddamn robots. Like, due to the fact that Handsome Jack, his entire army, are Hyperion robots, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, fire weapons kind of suck. Like, literally, like, one of the bosses in the game, the bunker, is a, is just a giant metal spaceship. What, what is fire damage going to do against that? Nothing. It's it's useless. You can't use any fire damage. Uh, it sucks. And then, like, even the end boss. Like, it's... The, the end boss is a lava monster. I don't know if fire damage even works against it. Like, it's just ass. Like, I feel like fire damage is useless for anything. Like, even general mobbing. Like, certain... Like, just... Their entire, like... Like, maps that it just, like, it doesn't really work. Like, I don't know. Like... It's not that fire damage is bad, like, it obviously will work against flesh and whatnot and people and, like, non-robots, and, like, obviously there are bandits and non-robot characters, but for how often you run into robots and loaders and stuff, it's just not worth having anything that does fire damage, to me at least. Like, it just feels so useless a lot of the time. Anyway, so yeah, you kill Flint. Yeah, his, again, his unique isn't too bad. Uh, I think it's called the Tinderbox. Yeah, so you go get Claptrap's ship, because I guess he has his own pirate, like, his own boat or whatever. You take the boat, you go to, uh, uh, what's the area called? I don't know. Crap, where do you go? Where do you even take the boat? You go, uh, I don't know. You go to this area where these people blow up this ramp, and they, like, I don't know, this car blows up, and this is where you first, it's Three Horns Divide, that's where it is, you go to Three Horns Divide, uh, go to Three Horns Divide, take the ship to Three Horns Divide, this is where you find the catch a ride station, this, again, this still feels like the tutorial of the game, because you're still being taught how to use the catch a ride system, that's why I don't like this entire beginning part of the game, because it still feels like a tutorial to an extent, uh, because you go to the catch a ride, and then Angel's like, oh, it doesn't work, you know, you gotta put the pimento in the, in the, the pimento box, the pimento, and then we got a pimento box, you know, like, fucking, uh, the car guy says, what's his name again, I don't know, uh, what's, uh, goddamn, I forgot, I forgot his name, Ellie's brother, of course I remember Ellie's name, but I don't remember, whatever, who cares, it doesn't matter at this point, uh, he dies anyway, <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, you get the catch a ride system, and she, and Angel's like, wow, the catch a ride works now, and then you take a car, and you jump the ramp, and then you, uh, you go, and you, uh, what, what do you do? You, you go to, like, get into Sanctuary, and then they're like, oh, you're the vault, you're the vault hunter, go help, uh, go do this thing before we let you in, I don't know, and then, uh, you, Corporal Reese, yeah, talks to you, and then what, what happens is you talk to, uh, Roland, Roland gets in contact with you, he's like, oh man, you're, you're the new Volt Hunter guy that escaped the clutches of Jack or whatever, you know, we could use your help or some shit like that, and then, uh, he tells you to go help one of his, uh, was it Reese? I don't know, he tells you to go help somebody, he's like, one of my, one of my guy is, is hurt, you need to go help him, he's got the, the ener energy, he's got the battery we need for our shields, and then you go over and the guy is getting, like, kicked, and then you kill everybody, and the guy's like, wake me up when I'm not on Pandora anymore, or something like that. And then he dies in front of you, you know, whatever. I've seen that a hundred times, whatever. Uh, so yeah, you, uh, you get the thing off him. Or no, he loses it, you don't get it off him. He's like, oh, the bandits took it. So then you have to go to this bandit camp. And like, there's a, there's a side objective where you're supposed to kill 20 of the guys. By the way, side objectives don't do shit. And I'm not talking like a side mission. Sometimes you'll have like, so if we take this uh, mission that I'm talking about, where you have to, you you have to get the battery from the bandits, and there's also a a secondary objective where you're asked. It's an optional objective if you want to kill 20 bandits or not. Uh, not kill if you don't kill the 20 bandits, you don't lose anything. And if you kill the 20 bandits, you gain nothing extra, as far as I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you do gain extra money for the reward or something. But I genuinely. 
I don't think you lose or gain anything. There's no reason to do ever the side stuff, uh, at all. Like, I don't think there is. So, uh, yeah, you don't kill the 20 bandits. You can, I don't know. Uh, I don't. So what happens is, uh, you kill them, you get, you get, you get the battery, you take the battery back to Sanctuary, you put it in the, in the shield generator, and they're like, oh, thank you, you fucking, you repair their shield generator. And then, uh, then you, then you talk to, uh, Roland or whatever, Roland's like, is Roland at Sanctuary or no? No, I don't think he is, I don't think he is at, in Sanctuary. You go to Sanctuary, you're, you talk to Scooter, that's his name, that's his name, Scooter, uh, you talk to Scooter and he's like, let's, let's, we're gonna make Sanctuary fly, and then it doesn't work, and he's like, dang, Nabbit, and then, oh, and before that, before you make it fly, you're supposed to talk to, uh, you talk to, uh, what's his name, the fucking, mor the stupid moron, uh, Earl, you talk to Earl, and Earl's like, what you want, and then, uh, you buy something off of him with Iridium, and then, uh, so yeah, that happens, and then Sanctuary doesn't fly, and then, uh, Roland tells you to get a voice thingy from the vault or something. I don't know. You go, you, you talk to Tannis too, I think, or whatever. She doesn't really do anything right now, but, uh, you go upstairs into their, into their hideout at Sanctuary or whatever it is, their, their H, their headquarters, and you get your, the, the voice comm out of the vault, and the Firehawk is like, come to Frostburn Canyon or you will die, or people will die or something, and it's like, holy crap, is that the Firehawk? And that's what Scooter says. But, like, you know, if you played Borderlands 1, you you already know that it's Lilith. Like, my my first time playing Borderlands 2, I knew that it was Lilith because it's the Firehawk. Her name is literally the Firehawk. Maybe you're not supposed to know it. Like, I, they set it up as it's supposed to be, like, oh, you don't know that it's Lilith until you show up. Dude, like, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, like, isn't her skill tree literally called the Firehawk in Borderlands 1? Like, it's very weird to, like, you know, try to hide it but uh i mean they hide it for like five minutes anyway you go to frostburn canyon i you never go there again because there's no reason to you go there to get lilith and that's it you just run and i always speed run frostburn canyon it is such i always speed run the first half of the game i just don't give a shit i run through it as fast as i can a lot of the time i will open up cheat engine or some kind of cheating software and i will put on two times speed for my entire playthrough of borderlands 2 or at least for the beginning part i hate like the the first half of the game is boring to me like because it feels like a lot of tutorial and just meh like I said, like, that's for me, and obviously I've replayed the game dozens and dozens of times, so, like, it's, you know, certain parts are gonna get boring, you're, like, you're, you're gonna have parts that you hate, you're gonna have parts that you like if you play a game a lot, you know, like, certain parts you're just gonna be like, okay, I've experienced this a thousand times, I'm good. Yeah, uh, you run through, you go, you run through, uh, literally speed run Frostburn Canyon, don't kill anybody, just keep, just run past everybody, killing people doesn't matter, uh... I mean, jokingly, obviously, but still, yeah, so you go, get little, little it's like a badass, badass, guy i don't know she like screams badass every five seconds and then uh so yeah you kill you kill uh you kill lilith and then she teleports you and she's like thanks champ uh or th that's when you find out that she's using the iridium she uses chunks of iridium to use her power she's like man this this shit is great it's like crack for her she lilith smokes crack basically is uh the moral of borderlands 2 is that she's t what you learn in borderlands 2 is that lilith starts smoking crack that's that's the entire game uh Iridium is just crack. That is the... <laughs> and Handsome Jack wants to be the world's biggest crack dealer, is what's happening. So, uh... Anyway, Lilith, uh, you learn that she's been smoking crack a lot. And she teleports you five feet away because she's a crack smoker. She can't actually do anything with her powers. So, she teleports you five feet away. She's like, sorry, kid, didn't mean to do that. And then, uh... Then you run... All, you run past every enemy again because... Fuck Frostburn Canyon. There's a, I think there's a unique weapon there called the Las Cox, Las Co, whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. It's mid as hell. It's not that good. Uh, I don't even know if it's at Frostburn Canyon. It's probably somewhere else. I don't remember. It's unique though. There's that. You could look up a video on the unique. I ain't gonna tell you everything about them. But uh, so yeah, Frostburn Canyon. Uh, you get out of there. You go back to Sanctuary, and I think Roland is at Sanctuary with Lilith after you get Lilith back um from frostburn canyon because she meets you back she's like okay sorry about that I'll, I'll just meet you you know back at sanctuary uh i'm a crack addict and then uh so yeah i go back and i don't even know what happens i think uh what what even happens after that point 
So basically what happens is you have to rescue Roland. That's why Roland wasn't with Lilith. I thought he was, but I keep forgetting because you have to go to the Bloodshot Stronghold. Will be f You have to go there and rescue Roland. And then after that, and then more happens, but then Roland comes back and I just forget the Bloodshot Stronghold because the Bloodshot Stronghold sucks. Like all of that sucks. Everything before the blood straw, but the blood, the shot strong stronghold sucks. And, and so basically what happens is you, uh, you go and so you have to rescue Roland and you go to the bloodshot stronghold and then they're like, that's not one of our cars. So you're not allowed to take the forerunner. I think it's called in there. You have to build one of the the bandit technicals i think yeah, the, the truck is called so then you have to go to the dust which is the worst fucking map ever you have to go to the dust you have to talk to ellie and then ellie's like i can build you one of those cars if i didn't just destroy the one that i had so then you have to destroy a bunch of the cars in the dust horrible i hate this part so much it is so boring and tedious uh those tubbies at the dust oh, so that's the only good part about that place but uh you go get parts for the vehicle and then you put the parts together and ellie's like well the goddamn you got the car working and then uh you take the truck that you just built bring it to the blood blo the, the strong shit hold and then you uh buzz your horn and they're like oh that's one of our guys let him in and then you walk in there and you kill everybody and then you steal the key open the door and then it's like a giant toilet bowl and then you have to run through this entire boring ass area with all these fucking characters that is such a waste of my time and effort uh so then you go through there and you do all of that and i i i'm, I'm watching the footage in the background that i have just playing while i'm talking and i decided to head to doc mercy's lair because i wanted to f this is a mission that i hate too the medical mystery mission the one with Doc Mercy, this is how you usually farm the Infinity Pistol. This mission sucks because before you're able to f farm for the Infinity Pistol, you have to get 20 kills with that stupid ass Iridian weapon that fucking the doctor gives you. Dr. Zed, he's like, oh, you need to get 20 kills with this. And it's just like, dude, go fuck yourself. I just want to farm for the Infinity Pistol. Anyway. So I ended up farming for the Infinity Pistol before I went to the Bloodshot Stronghold, and I didn't- I forgot about this, I guess I looked this up for when I was playing the game, but as you can see right here, if you start the mission from, uh, what's his name, the fat guy, uh, the one that sells you the Marcus, if you go to Marcus and you start the mission where he shows you how elements work, you uh if you don't actually complete that mission what you can do is just use the weapon and get 25 kills from the marcus mission because if you don't complete the marcus mission where you have to get the elemental kills uh these this guy will actually die this vandal that you kill will actually respawn and a lot some people might know this but if you were if a, a way before you know without using cheats a good way to level up a character was to have a friend who was like the highest level possible load up his game and then start this mission and then this vandal would be ranked like 70 or whatever the highest level the person in the game was and then you would your teammate would uh kill that you would kill the uh this enemy a bunch and you would get a bunch of xp and you would level up your character but yeah apparently this works for uh this mission i had completely forgotten about it but that's cool so and i did indeed farm an infinity pistol and you will see me using it so uh back to the video sidetracked for a minute there but uh yeah so the bloodshot stronghold shit happens and uh y y you go to save our guy roly and he's like oh, thanks vault hunter for saving me and then a, a loader breaks in the wall behind him and he's like jesus christ and then he gets taken away by the loader then you have to follow the loader uh all the way to the top of the bloodshot stronghold and the worst part about this is if you don't save roland and you have to like you just can't do it because you're, you're just shit at the game or something you have to teleport away from the area and then he will be taken to a to the a the a, a hyperion like gulag or whatever it is and then you have to save him from there so the best your best option is just to destroy this loader bot and save roland there just so you can get the mission over with already and then he then roland ends up coming back to sanctuary oh my god this entire just this, this entire process i hate and is so tedious and boring and awful and nothing about it is fun rescued our pal roly polioli and i need to bring something up here i have no idea what the hell i'm talking about i mean i do like i forgot i forgot the uh blood sh blood shit shot shit because 
it's so boring. Like, I remember Borderlands 2, I played it a bunch, but just some parts, like, you know, you're gonna, it's like, it's like a good movie with that one part that you just don't like, you know? So, like, I'm gonna, and plus there's no scripts. Scripts are for losers. I mean, you could probably tell with all the uh, uh, uhs going on. But, uh, we go to the Tundra Express here, alright, we have to, what we do is, this is where we meet Mordecai and Tiny Tina, and Mordecai's like, you need to light these Varkids on fire, and if you don't have a fire weapon, you can shoot the snowman's head in the beginning of the map, and you can get the Tinder Box, that is one of the other ways you can get, uh, the unique item from Captain Flint is by shooting that snowman, and I think that snowman drops the Tinder Box, uh, weird, but okay. Uh, so you have to light these Varkids on fire, and then, yeah, it has to be three of them. I hate missions like this, where it's like, you have to injure specific enemies. Because this comes up again, where it's like, you have to injure three enemies, and it's the most annoying shit ever. Look at this, I can't injure a single one of these goddamn motherfuckers. Um, like, they all just keep dying. I'm doing too much damage. But, uh, yeah, you have to injure them, or you have to ignite them on fire, not injure them. You have to light them on fire. Dude, screw these missions, they're so stupid. I'm glad, I, I don't think Borderlands 3 had any like this, stupid as shit, uh, you know, individually light them on fire, and then Mordecai's like, wow, good for you, and then he just shoots stuff throughout the map, he doesn't really do anything, to be completely honest, he's a fucking waste of space, um, but after that, you go meet up with Tina, and she's like, come on in, the door's open, and then you go to meet her, and she's like, I need you to, uh, yeah, she need, she needs to make badonkadonks, but she needs the uh, she needs the the the, the gunpowder shit. So what you have to do is then you go over and you have to steal back the explosives or the missiles or whatever, and then you get them. You get you get one of them from this one area where the train is at, and you kill a bunch of guys and you grab it. You don't even need to kill the guys. You can just run over and grab it. Then there's another badonkadonk that you grab and then you bring it back and she's like thank you very much and then she builds the bombs and she's like take them and then you shoot them at a train and then the train fucking blows up and it comes off the rails and tina laughs the entire time as it happens and then uh that's that's how you go to meet wilhelm so what you do is you take the uh you fast travel to the other part of the Tundra Express. This is basically, it's not really anything. This other area after you blow up the train is really just a, a walkway to the boss battle with Wilhelm, which, like, I've seen, like, people talk about how it's, like, all meant to be built up, like, it was such a hard boss battle, like, they're trying, like, the boss battle itself, I think everybody knows, is easy as hell, but even from my first time playing it, I never thought the boss battle was going to be difficult at all, because it's, like, like, even if they do, like, a, like, hype him up, which, they never really hyped up Wilhelm, the only time they hype up Wilhelm is when you meet him, like, the moment you meet him, they pull, pull the cutscene of him lifting up the train, and they're like, holy crap, is that Wilhelm? He almost killed all of us. And I'm like, who the fuck is Wilhelm? I don't even know who this guy is. And then I one-shot him, and he's dead. So, you know, that happens. So, after that happens, you take the core. I feel like I'm speeding through this really fast. Anybody else feel like this? Like, I don't know, I just... The intro was so long, and now I'm just, like, getting through it. I don't know, I, I don't... I would... I was expecting this video to be, like, four hours, but I'm, I'm glad it's not. Oh, I got a legendary! Holy moly, what is that? I mean, it's not, I'm not a high enough level. Lobbed Bouncing Bunny. Okay. Your sister is a bitch. I didn't even... Got a legendary from that. Anyway, so you kill Wilhelm, and then you, uh, teleport. You teleport to, uh... I don't know. Where do you go? You go back. If you get the shield, that's what you do. You pick up a battery, and then you go back to Sanctuary, and you have to put the new battery in, but then it's like... Then Jack goes... Uh, do it, or, I don't know, something happens, and, oh, the battery fell off the map here. Well, that's upsetting. I didn't even realize that. How the hell does that even happen? Did the battery fall off the map? I can't even pick up the power core. How did I complete this mission? That is upsetting. I quit the game. I have to reload it. Anyway, after reloading the game and fighting him again and then picking up the power core, I, uh, yeah, you have to take the power core back to Sanctuary and then it turns out that the, uh, lady in your head isn't on your side. Angel's like, uh, shield's going down and then Jack's like, wonderful, and then they start shooting, shooting Sanctuary and it's like, oh my god, people are dying. And then they're like, 
Roland goes, what the hell was that? Are the shields down? Like, clearly, a bunch of people are dying. You're getting hit by meteors. What the fuck do you think's happening? Roland, you stupid motherfucker. Anyway, uh, so after that happens, Lilith goes to the center, and you give her a bunch of iridium, or uh, Roland gets, like, crushed by a bunch of rubble, and he's like, here, take the iridium. Forget about me, soldier. And then, uh, you take the iridium to, uh, you take the crack. I should just, you could just take the crack over to Lilith, and she goes... I've never taken this much crack at once. And then she teleports only you away, of course, again. But she levitates the entire city, and then that's how you get Sanctuary in the air. And now the game is getting good, because uh, we're about, like, midway point, maybe a little over midway point. So Sanctuary is now floating in the sky, and uh, you have to go through this, like, weird under area, like this weird, weird area through these doors. I don't even know what to call it. And then you go down into this basement area, and, uh... God, what happens after this point? What what, do you, what even happens after Sanctuary goes in the air? Like, don't you have to do something? I don't know, I, I gotta see the footage again. So, I got some stromboli. Anyway, so I- and this part's boring as hell, too, dude. This, this middle part of the game is such- bleh. Like, it's not that it's boring, it's just- it says a lot of running long distances and nothing of note happening. Uh, that's why I don't remember, because nothing really happens. So basically, what happens is you run through this little Hyperion area, and you have to get... Uh, there's no, The fast travel doesn't work, so you have to get this beacon from this mini ter Terramorphous mother flucker, and you get that back, and then you can't... Sanctuary isn't on the map anymore. So you have to, like, set up a beacon so Sanctuary does show up. That's what happens. You have to fight. You have to like fight off these waves of enemies on this hill, and then you teleport to Sanctuary finally. And it turns out Roland's A-OK. -okay. He's perfectly fine. The rebels teleported off of him or something. And uh, he goes, "Okay, we we need more help. I need you to get this guy." And it's basically Brick. It's the Slab King, I think he's called. I think that's what they call him. So you have to. So this is the the brick part. You basically have to go and get brick to join your your team, and you go over two thousand cuts. Am I skipping the entire Bloodwing part? No, it has to be before the Bloodwing part, right? Am I wrong? I think I might be getting ahead of myself here. Let me go look at my footage real quick. Yeah, so it turns out that I, you know, commentated the entirety. Well, commentated, I described the entirety of, uh, the brick section because I completely forgot the wildlife exploitation preserve section of the game happened. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing that. It's now 3 a.m. Uh... So this is wonderful. But, uh, we're gonna quickly describe the wildlife exploitation. There are parts of this game that I, I, that just go in, go in one ear and out the other. And, like, it, they're just, I don't know, the game's not boring, but when you play it hundreds of times in a row, you just, you just start to zone out certain parts of the game. And other parts, you just, like, you know, you just have favorite parts of the game after playing it so much. Like, I love Borderlands 2. But, like, my 100th playthrough isn't going to be the same as my first playthrough. You know, I'm going to care about stuff differently than I did before. Like, you know, your first legendary is going to be a godsend. And then on your 100th playthrough, your first legendary has a chance at being a piece of shit. So, I don't know. But, uh, let's explain. I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's too late. Let's explain the wildlife exploitation preserve. I'm going to do it super quickly. You go in, handsome jacks doing uh, you find it's like it's a bit of lore thing a handsome jacks like doing tests on like animals and stuff with iridium and like the biggest the biggest thing about it is you're just looking for for a uh, for st stupid boneheads pet bird and it turns out that like jack did a iridium thing on it and he made it like 500 times its size and he's like don't hurt her you know you get to the bird you, uh, night night hawk high hawk wing whatever the hell the name of it is and it was like talon that's not even the bird's name, that's the baby bird's name, but he's like, he's like, don't hurt her, I'm gonna tranquilize her, and it's like, dude, how are you even gonna keep her as a pet anyway? She's like 700 feet tall, there's no way, there's, what are you gonna do with her? There's nothing to do with her. She's too big, there's, she's too big to be held captive anyway at this point, as a pet. So, you know, obviously you take the chip off her neck, and Handsome Jack goes, oh, she's got the explosive element in her, and her head blows up. 
and then this part is so cringy like <laughs> I like the part with the with a long neck beard guy <laughs> his his I I hate when he gets mad after the bird dies he goes he goes uh He's like, I'm gonna kill you, Jack. He sounds like an edgy 14 year old from an anime, you know, like trying to be like a, like Kirito type vibes. Like, oh my God, like Kirito was more badass than he was in this scene. He's like, I'm gonna kill you, Jack. And then you're leaving the area and he's like, and Jack's like, you think you're not gonna get out of here alive, are you? And I'm like, well, I still have the other half of the game to get through, so fucking course I am. Like, what are you talking about? And then, uh, and he, he doesn't even send anybody after you. Like, after you kill the bird, you could just walk off the roof, and it's just, like, a short walk to the fast travel. So it's not like you have to go through an entire area of enemies to begin with. Like, my, there might be a couple of, like, like of the, those raptor-flying-looking fuckers, but that's about it. You just run past them. You don't even need to fight them. Like, you just literally just run past them. They don't really attack you. Like, it's not crazy. But, you know, you got long neck beard guys yelling at you. He's like, Vault Hunter, get down! And then he, like, pulls out this, and he starts sniping them. But, like, he's not really doing any damage to them. I don't know. I just run past the entire area and then just complete the mission because it's boring as fuck. That's why. So that that's the natural selection, Annex. Fuck that shit. So you have to, so this is the, the brick part. You basically have to go and get brick to join your, your team. And you go over to Thousand Cuts. You go and you, uh, run through everybody. And Brick's like, you have to defeat my waves of slabs if you want to be able to, to talk to me or whatever. And then you fight them all and then he jumps down and he's like, you are one slick motherfucker, slab. And then you hand him the note from Roland and he's like, oh, what's this? Is this, uh... This is from Roland. I was wondering if he would text me back, that sly dog, you. And then he says yeah to joining you. And then, <laughs> then after that, is I hate this part too because it's so slow. I, I feel like a lot of people probably hate this. Maybe it's just me. But, so, after Brick joins you, you have to escape the, his, like, his fort. And this part is so much slower than it has to be. Because what happens is, Handsome Jack decides to shoot, just like shoot motors down from the sky. But what happens is there's three beacons that are like allowing him to shoot down the motors. So Brick, only Brick can destroy the beacons. You can't as far as I know, unless there is like a way to glitch it. So you have to wait for Brick to destroy these three beacons. Like he destroys one, you move, like you move down the path a little bit and he destroys another. And like the path from where beacon, from where Brick's, uh, fort is to like the fast track or the teleport station isn't even that far but it's just like it's a t 20 extra minutes of because the b biggest problem isn't just brick has to destroy the beacons every single loader that spawns brick will target the loaders first instead of just going for the beacons so what happens is a loader will spawn in front of brick or get shot down from the sky brick then has to run over to the loader start hitting it until somebody kills it either he kills it or you do and then he goes after the beacon so you have to like you basically have and th th this is why i like end up using cheats when i play the game because i don't like i always like waiting to do the side missions till the end of the game the problem with this is Borderlands 2 was built in a way where you can't, you become underleveled if you only exclusively play the story and do no side missions. So as it currently stands, I'm already three to four levels under everybody else. So that's why like I end up using cheats because no matter what, I have to end up like, you know, I mean, you could just go out of your way and do the side missions, but like I like to save them to the end. I like having something to do after I beat the game. And that's just me. I like doing the story first. I don't really care about the side missions a lot. So uh at least like, you know, like I said, I like saving them till the end. So that was a big problem for me with what Borderlands 2 is like try you physically can't play the game legit. I mean, you can play the game legitimately all the way through, but try playing normal mode, all right? Just start in normal mode and try to beat the game all the way through without doing any side missions just do the story you by the time you get to the end of the game if you're going through it as fast as possible you will literally be 10 levels under the boss you will be level 20 and the boss will be like level 30 it's crazy uh so yeah anyway you uh brick you know he you have to kill off all the loaders so he can get through and destroy the shit that happens finally you're able to teleport back to sanctuary and then that's when you uh start your attack on on Jack were so this part uh, involves having to go to the bunker 
after a brick, everybody's like, okay, we're gonna go to the bunker, because that's where Angel's being held, so you have to, like, we got to the point where you have to go get Angel or kill her, I think Angel's like, you, you have to kill me, or whatever the hell, for some reason, I don't know, she's suicidal. So, what happens is, uh, you go, you, your plan is to go to the bunker, but first, you need a to get past the lock, you need a clone, you need Jack's voice. You need to look like Jack, I think, and you need to, I don't know if you need to look like, no, you just need his voice. So you have to uh, clone Jack's voice. And what you do is you go to Opportunity, I think it's called, like this like utopian city that Jack has made in his name. And you have to make yourself look like Jack. Wait, is this before or after the annex? Is this, be is this before the area where you kill blood? I think I might be getting ahead of myself. Yeah, so this is where the game starts to get really spicy. This is probably one of my more favorite parts of the game is the bunker, at least because I, my like most play one of my most played characters other than Gunzerker is probably Zero. So you know the boar skill, just going against the bunker with boar and all of that. But uh, before you do the uh, bunker, you do have to go to Opportunity first, and for the mission, the man who would be Handsome Jack, as I stare at the mission name on my screen, because. I probably wouldn't remember that if it wasn't on the screen right now, but, uh, yeah, you got you gotta go to Opportunity. This is, th this, the Opportunity's a cool area. I really like the map, but the mission's kind of boring as hell. It's not extremely difficult, and you can kind of speedrun it really well. You just run over, find the clone, kill the clone. The thing that makes the Opportunity part super long isn't actually, uh, getting the voice module and getting all the voice lines. So, it's actually the voice lines that play in the game. So I have a mod on that allows me to skip voice lines. I think I put it on halfway through the playthrough or something. And in my latest playthrough that I didn't record, just, you know, a couple, like yesterday or the day, day before, uh, I realized that if you, uh, when you get the, the voice cloner, you have to go to a bunch of these like pylons or, or, weird commentary things around opportunity to duplicate his voice and you have to like play a voice line from handsome jack and it's him talking about opportunity and like a bunch of he's just lying and stuff uh to clone his voice but you have to wait for the voice lines to finish like you could you could start running to the next one but it doesn't ch mark it off and i don't know if you could start the next one until like the other one is finished so you have to wait for him to finish the voice line but if you just skip the voice line with a mod uh, then it just automatically finishes it. So, like, you can immediately go to the next one, and you don't have to wait for the previous voice line to finish, and it makes it way faster And than the mission actually is. This, like, opportunity mission is way longer simply because you have to wait for the in-game voice lines to finish. For, like, every part of the mission, there's a voice line before for every single part of this mission. Like, the mission is actually really short, and you can get through it quickly if it wasn't for the 700 voice lines they have in the game. Don't get me wrong, the voice acting is great. I love the game and the entire story. This is my 10,000 millionth playthrough. I'm not trying to hear the same exact voice lines for the 10 bajillionth time. So, uh, yeah, but opportunity is great. You kill the clone, and then you get the voices and stuff. And, uh, after that, then you go to the bunker. So, you get the voice module thing because you need it to, uh, get into the bunker or to get into the area where Angel is located because it's voice activated. Uh, so then after that, you go back to Thousand Cuts, and you meet up with the Plap Trap, and, uh, before you meet up with the Plap Trap, you give him the invisible thingy, I think. I think that's when you give him the invisible thing, if not, it's later, but I'm pretty sure you give it to him right before you go to, uh, Opportunity. I think you need to get, you're supposed to get the, an invisible thing for him while you're there. I don't know, I don't know. You give something to Plap Trap, and he's able to turn invisible now, or some shit. But, uh, yeah, you go to Thousand Cuts again. And, because that's where the bunker is located, and then, or to get to the bunker, you have to go to Thousand Cuts first, and I, I really like Thousand Cuts, like how they did that, like it's split off in the two areas, like half of Thousand Cuts is where Brick is, and then it also, Terramorphous is at Thousand Cuts, so like Thousand Cuts is just like a, a like a three-way map, like Brick's there for the story mode mission, and then the bunker is off to the left, and then Terramorphous is also at Thousand Cuts, like, it's crazy. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you go to Thousand Cuts again, meet up with Claptrap, and, you know, Claptrap opens up one of the gates for you because he's able to get through the, uh, the burning beam thingy, and you're not able to. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, you, uh, 
Dear God, I just, I just can't. 3.30 a.m. Anyway, uh, yeah, Claptrap lets you in, you have to fight a bunch of mobs, and then you teleport to the bunker, and then, like, Handsome Jack goes, the bunker isn't the place. And then the bunker, uh, starts attacking you. And if you're zero, it's a lot of fun because you shoot it once and it, f and it goes, it blows out your eardrums. And I'm going to try to simulate it. It just blows out your eardrums and then, uh, the fight ends. Uh, if you're playing Gunzerker, you just, you just do the money shot glitch. And that's it. You get a Vlad off launcher and you just do the money shot glitch a bunch. And then, uh, if you're playing any other class, good luck. It's not, it's, it's, it's actually a, it's mid fight. You know, if you're under leveled, it's rough. If you're not under leveled, it's mid. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh. It's, 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 it's a zero fight, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those fights. It's a zero boss type, type, type boss fight, fight. Ugh, I can't even anymore. So yeah, you kill, you kill the, uh, bunker, and then after killing the bunker, you're finally able to go to the control area for Angel, and you have to say, you have to speak into the intercom with Jack's voice, and you go, I love you. And then it lets you in, and then, uh, you go into the room, and he's like, get away from my daughter. And then she, he yanks her back. And she's like, you you have to shoot the, the things giving me the already the crack, you know, that she's putting crack into my veins. And uh, and then Lilith shows up and she's like, oh, sup, uh, you know, I'm here. Or Roland, Roland is meeting you up there. And then he doesn't want Lilith to show up, but Lilith shows up. And Jack, and let's be real, Roland dies because of Lilith. But that's a bit of a spoiler anyway. Uh, so, ja so, not Roland, Roland shows up, he's, he's like, I'm here, Vault Hunter, I'm climbing up the control tower, and he shows up, and then, motherfucking Lilith is like, oh, I'm here too, and, fucking Roland is like, why did you show up, I told you not to come, and she's like, I, I gotta, I gotta be here, I'm, I'm the cool, quirky girl, you know, like, uh, edgy, edgy girl type, whatever the fuck, I'm, she's a moron, she's a woman, like, I don't know, she's a moron, that's all it is to it, like, not, like, most women aren't that stupid, but, like, Lilith is, I guess, you know, just engraving the stereotype that women are stupid, I guess. Like, I guess she's debunking the stereotype of stupid blonde because she's a redhead. So, you know, you, I guess you don't really see stupid redheads. Is that mean? Is that sexist? I don't know. Whatever. It's fucking Lilith. Lilith's a piece of shit. She's the worst girl in the game. Anyway, uh, so then Handsome Jack, you know, you, you go to kill, uh, you kill Angel. And then Handsome Jack's like, no. And then he teleports into the room and he, uh... He teleports behind Roland and shoots him in the chest. I guess Roland didn't have a shield on and he was at 1 HP and wasn't programmed into the respawn station. So rip to him, you know, a rip, rip to him. Uh, he dies and Lilith's like, no, you bastard. And then she, uh, you know, not thinking or anything after watching, you know, her boyfriend die. She just runs straight at him, which I guess, you know, it's emotions and shit. But like, aren't you a soldier who's seen many people die and shit? Like, wouldn't you like... Like, obviously, that's a huge, intense moment, but, like, J Jack just teleported into the room out of nowhere, and you're just gonna run at him with no thought in the world because, boom, he puts a collar on her, and then he starts feeding her crack or something like that to get to get Lilith to open the vault. Like, I, she's really stupid for running at him. This all could have been avoided if she proceeded to not teleport into the room and wasn't there because then... Uh, Roland wouldn't have been, had his back turned like that, because he was looking at you and Lilith, and he had his back turned, instead you could have just been like, you know, there would have been more room for you to know, I was like, oh shit, Jack just teleported in, careful, Roland, and he's like, alright, we got this, and then you just kill him, and it's over, the, the game ends, but, uh, no, you know, Lilith has to fuck up everything, and make the game a little bit longer, uh, yeah, that shit, that shit's ass. And, it, it, you know, what? I, I forgot that I was about to say that, oh, after that happens, you just go and fight Jack. But no, there's another stupid ass area you have to do. I just remembered. I, I forgot and I remember that stupid ass buzzard tower. I, I hate this buzzard tower part. You go to, you go to bumfuck wherever, this giant ass tower. And it's like, you have, you have to go to the top of this buzzard tower and the, the, the Slab King's tower, whatever. It's like, you have to go there and like recruit people for... For, yeah, you have to recruit the buzzard people, get, get the supplies for some stupid ass reason, because as if they're gonna help you, they don't, you don't, they don't do anything the entire game, you do all of the work, you do 100% of it, you do 110% of the work, nobody helps you throughout the entire game, it's all you, like, there's not a single soul that does anything, like, the board, at least the Borderlands 3 NPCs actually do shit for you, and actually, like, like, somewhat contribute, like, it feels like they contribute to the story, like, in the cutscenes and stuff, and then, like, 
and you know on the side story but nah like in this it just feels like i'm doing all the work everybody else is like oh we're gonna help you you know we're gonna help you do this but it's useless the the most useful character in this entire fucking game is claptrap dude to be real like he's the only person that's ever done anything like he turns like claptrap goes in and turns off the the you know opens up the doors and shit like what what is brick done for me other than just call me slab and said damn slab you're a badass for jumping off the tower what has he done nothing what did mordecai do nothing his weapon does no fucking damage it just slags the enemies what are you doing like tina's done more than everybody and she showed up for five fucking seconds like what the hell is going on lilith she's the reason why Ro roland fucking died like you're the reason why jack's able to power the vault monster and actually get it awake it's all your fault like nobody's done anything for me and anyway um so you go to the t yeah after the buzzard tower area uh that's when you actually end up going to fight jack i think that that's when you go to iridium blight and the iridium blight is my favorite area in the game and that is because iridium blight soundtrack is bussin dude the iridium blight soundtrack is bussin and we're gonna listen to that right now part slaps dude oh my god that part slaps oh man like that that one part in the iridium blight like every time i teleport to iridium blight that that like that synthy part is like that droning synth part is always playing and oh my god it's just the vi the vibes dude the vibes when you teleport to iridium blight especially when it's the end game because then you go to iridium blight and then that the bridge gets destroyed and then you have to go to the data mining mission i completely forgot about this mission too this stupid ass data mining one where you have to see i don't mind this but like i don't like the, this the end game i love the borderlands 2 end game like, I don't really like the tower that much, the buzzard tower. I like the part where you have to destroy the buzzard, but I don't like going to the top of the tower. It's not difficult, and it's not super bad. It's a bit annoying. But, like, I do love the end game of Borderlands 2. I love the bunker itself, like, fighting the bunker. Uh, I love this part where you do the data mining mission where you go to this is the original area this is the starting area in borderlands one and you basically see what has happened after jack has taken over hyperion and basically like bulldozed through the area technically you know it's it's a great uh like just you know they basically put a highway in the middle of this you know nice little town i mean it's well it's borderlands not really nice but still like it's just crazy because you because it this is a uh, i forget the name of the area but like you can actually find the original buildings from borderlands one here the starting area the original sanctuary whatever you want to call it and it's just great i i i kind of like this area you know it's not perfect it's a it's a bit 
a tedious because you have to go really far you have to like go to both pump stations which is b a bit annoying because they're both kind of far from each other but overall i do other than the pump station part which is uh, stupid and i don't like the pump stations other than that i do like the entire area i like the uh little mini raid boss fight on uh, uh i forget saturn is it saturn no it's not saturn that's not no is it is the robot's name saturn i think it is saturn uh I, I like the Saturn fight, you know, he's a, he's a cool fight, I think he dr has a chance to drop some really good weapons and legendaries and stuff, I think he's, his, one of his dedicated drops is the Hive, and that's a really good rocket launcher, I think is the Hive rocket launcher, so, uh, I know there's a pistol, that's the pistol, the pistol is the Hornet, the Hive is the, uh, corrosive rocket launcher, which is a very good rocket launcher, and the, the Hornet's really nasty as a pistol itself, it's corrosive, so obviously it's gonna be nasty, They're, everything's a loader, but, uh, yeah, man, like, Iridium Blight, especially at Endgame, you know, so, let me explain the data mining mission here quick, so basically, you go over, do these two pumps, after you do the two, two pump stations, you have to get on top of the bridge, and, uh, you have to, like, overload the pump or turn them off, the pumps, and after you fight Saturn, you go and turn off the pump, then you take your car, ram it into the pipe and then you travel through the pipe to get something for some reason i forget what it's f oh you, i think this is where you get the uh the invisible chip you have to go into the tower and this is where you get the chip to make claptrap invisible so i said before that that the entire point of going to the buzzard tower was for the chi chip uh that wasn't it the buzzard tower was to get explosives to destroy the bridge to get to opportunity or some bullshit like that uh the yeah that's why the or so i don't know you, you did something with the buzzer towers but this part i think is where you get the invisible chip because claptrap needs it to get to iridium blade i don't know some bullshit but uh, you, you know shit happens in the game that's it's a video game you know the the, the story's progressing is what's happening right now dude it, you know it's per, time is progressing it's currently four in the morning um you know, why am I, why am I doing this at 4 a.m.? Because, I don't know, I don't even have work tomorrow. Like, I don't even have work. I could, who cares? But, uh, anyway, so yeah, you, uh, you go to, you give, you give the device to Claptrap, and then finally you go back to Iridium Blight. And that second to last, or that, that last time you go back to Iridium Blight is right before you get to the final area where the boss battle with Handsome Jack and the Warrior is at. And that final area where you go to Iridium Blight and your last mission is to just f you have to wait for Claptrap to open that door but man like every single time I go to Iridium Blight that song is playing with those droning synths and oh my god just the vibe I feel like that those synths just just jiggle my bones I don't even know how to describe it like it's just this feeling that it gives me of like it's it's it, the best way to explain it is a surrealist feeling that's the best way I, I can explain it is it's a very very surreal feeling like it really engrosses me in the world and something that i want to talk about really quickly is music and games can really give you a huge impact you know like ambient noise and stuff can make an impact but music for me i really notice it maybe it's just because you know i i'm a big fan of music you know i'm a i'm a quirky you know i like music i know a lot of people don't like music i'm a bit underground with that but uh no, yeah, like, just music in games gets me, you know, it's weird, and it's always specific soundtracks, like, you know, there are some music in areas, but that, like, the Iridium Blight soundtrack is just always, like, a core memory of mine when I play this game, it just gives me, like, it, such a great feeling, like, I don't know, it's just the surrealist, like, being at Iridium Blight, the way Iridium Blight looks, it's very, just, unique, like, it's weird like this is this is it you know this is the end it's a it's not the main area there's nothing super important going on but it's it's the lead up to the most important part the ending of the game it is the end of the game and it has that very like you know the steps before the end type uh feel to it with that surrealist feel and everything it's just it, it's just a crazy feeling especially with that sound playing but uh yeah, so you go to Iridium Blight for the last time, and you do that entire kind of annoying-ass part where Claptrap tries to get a door open for 20 minutes straight, and then you're finally at the end of the game. 
where you have to kill Handsome Jack. God, that would have been so cool to end it there and then play the fucking actual last mission of the game. And uh, I realized that after the door part, before you get to Handsome Jack, you have to run through this other area, which granted, you can speed run this. I was playing this on my 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 uh, my Krieg playthrough, my one that I was playing a couple days ago, and you could run through this area, especially if you have two times speed on or three times speed like I do in this playthrough. You can just run through this entire area and skip 90% of this. You can skip literally all of it. You don't have to wait. Like, you can run through this entire area with grenade jumps and shit. Like, you don't even have to wait for them to destroy shields of certain areas or, or pathways. You can just get through. But yeah, I forgot about this this area that's playing on the screen. Fuck this area. It's just a waste of time. Like, this this is, I guess this is the excuse of Brick and Mordecai helped you. Dude, I could, sp I could just run through the whole area with grenade drums and shit, but, you know, whatever. You know, you get through this entire area, that's right here, all of this, this giant slog, and then we get to the last area where we, we fight Handsome Jack. If, 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 if only this wasn't in the game, this entry, so... Yeah, I forgot that my power went out in the middle of recording, and uh, I have it set to MP4, so if my power goes out or something like that, the recording does not save. Forgot about that. This is, like I said in the beginning, this was, I don't know, unless I cut it out, this was recorded a long time ago, like six months ago, this recording. So, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I uh, went to grab the footage, and I was like, oh my god. I completely forgot that this happened, uh, which is funny because I had actually beaten the entire game. I, uh, I not only did I lose the footage of that one part, but I actually, uh, I think beat the warrior, but due to the game crashing, it didn't actually like complete the last mission. Uh, so luckily I was still able to complete the last mission. As you're seeing right now, we are going to be fighting Jack and then killing the warrior. And for the first time ever, I'm just going to let the gameplay play out and not talk. power Pandora has ever seen, <laughs> and it's my control!
Yeah, so that's Borderlands 2. We beat the game. Uh, I didn't get a conference call, but I got a volcano. That's surprising, to be honest. You, it's The conference call is usually the legendary you always get. But, uh, yeah, we killed Jack. Got ourselves a volcano. Just, just to show how odd this run was, because usually it's a conference call. I mean, you don't always have to get a legendary. But uh, I think there is a 100. I think you will always get a legendary, but it won't always be... A conference call is a high chance for it to be it but uh a lot of the time i get a conference call anyway what does that have to do with anything the game is over thanks for watching uh the the singular person that is watching which is probably me watching this after i upload it to make sure there's no errors because you know i do that i do it three times i do it in editing and then i proceed to do it again after i in the middle of, while uploading the video i'll watch the rendered version on my own computer and then i'll watch it again i mean not really i don't really watch the full upload to be honest no reason to if i already watched you know the render but uh yeah so uh borderlands two ends and then there's the vaults on all the other planets which i guess kind of is leads into borderlands three and why borderlands three happens but the problem the problem with the borderlands series is the pre-sequel maybe i'll do a pre-sequel video i do have all the recordings completely done for borderlands 3 because i had played borderlands 3 and then played borderlands 2 so i have borderlands 3 finished and all recorded so i could do that uh i was originally going to do every borderlands game but i just didn't really feel like playing borderlands 1 i never got around to it but the pre-sequel i wouldn't mind playing through again if you would want that possibly before borderlands 3 maybe i'll do that uh yeah, I definitely will do a Borderlands 3 video, possibly, most likely, because I do already have the footage for it. I was gonna end it there, because the footage stopped, but, uh, I guess I should actually wrap this up and give my retrospect, my take on this, because I guess the video title that I thought of as of recently is going to be a look back on Borderlands 2. And did we look back? We played the entire game. Uh, originally this was going to be, I was going to plan on doing this as like a knockoff of, a uh, Red Litter Media's review series. If you haven't seen them, they basically have a series where they review movies. They re-watch older movies and whatnot to an extent. Uh, obviously they have a bunch of like half in the bag and stuff, but for review, I think they just go back and they will like watch older stuff like Tremors, Ghostbusters, the original one and all of that. So that was originally my plan. I was literally just going to name this review borderlands 2 like title it how they would but uh, i'm just gonna say look back because it, it it's just better it's it's a, a bit more original it's less original i don't know it, whatever you, youtube gamer shit but uh yeah what do i think of borderlands 2 obviously it still holds up people like i said in the beginning people do still play this game a lot a lot of people play it there's a big bonding community for it which i really enjoy i play the game with mods like exclusively now i rarely ever play it without mods and even if i'm not using mods i'm always using the community patch just because it's nice to have uh the dialogue skip is really really nice for somebody like me who just hates listening to the same exact dialogue adult uh, you know for certain parts of the game and uh i would say give it a try play the game with cheats uh, and like i mean that is in a genuine way even if you're not into cheats because there is a uh, a cheat engine table out there and yes you could use cheat engine on the game you're not gonna get banned or anything there's no there's no banning system in place for borderlands uh there is a cheat table for cheat engine which has a bunch of crazy cheats i think admiral baru in the past and a bunch of other creators like years and years ago back in like pre 2015 uh we're using doing like a cheat engine run through and, and like it's it's not just like oh like you know un unlimited health type cheats unlimited ammo no it's got like randomizer we're like any mob like i mean they have randomizer mods too that you can just download but like the, you, you play the game with mods and stuff you might actually find something worth coming back to if you're not a super huge fan of borderlands 2 or you just want to come back to the game there is a uh ultimate there is a texture dlc that you can get like a high-res textures uh like 
on Steam, if you own the game on Steam or wherever, I think they're just like, is a genuine official free DLC that you can get that makes the textures slightly more high res or something like that. And there's also mods that make the game look better. I don't really use any of those, but you could get them yourself. Again, uh, I think one of the biggest assets that Borderlands has going for itself is also the art style. One, Borderlands 2 has probably the one of the best gaming stories, like just casual gaming stories to date. It's got one of the best, uh, what, what would Handsome Jack be? Villains? Antagonists? I guess I would call him a villain. One of the best video game villains to date. So good that they literally brought him back in the third game in a DLC. Because, yeah. Uh, technically, to an extent, they kind of brought him back. Not really, but, like, he's, he's kind of in the game. Uh, but yeah, like, this game still has a lot to offer, and that's not even including all of the DLC. This game has so much DLC, and it you can get it for, like, insanely cheap. Like, you beat the main game of Borderlands 2, and that's, like, 5% of what there is to offer, at least to me. Like, Borderlands 2 isn't just Borderlands 2. It is the entire, like, everything. Borderlands 2 to me is like, okay, I beat the main game. Time to do all of the Headhunters and all of the big main DLCs. There's four big DLCs, and then there's like six headhunter packs, which are like one hour tiny little DLCs on their own, which I wish Borderlands 3 had, but it doesn't. Borderlands 2 is such a timeless classic that literally the own studio can't even recreate the just perfection of the game. Like Borderlands 3 isn't a bad game by any means but it doesn't really come close to Borderlands 2. And Borderlands 1 also doesn't really come close to Borderlands 2 either. It is literally lightning in a bottle, and it's just a crazy ride all the way through. DLC included, all the weapons, guns, all the characters. The entire game is iconic, and it's just... I, there's a reason why the game hasn't died, and... Clearly, if, if it's not anything that I brought up, then I don't know what it is.